We're talking about concept, content, and composition. That's what a sketch is about. A sketch is concept because it's about the big idea, and then it's about content, what things will be in that image to communicate that idea, and composition, how will those things be laid out in the image. Hey guys, I'm Tom Froze and this is Making Friends. This is where I answer your questions about illustration. I hope you guys are having a great Monday, amazing start to your week. Uh, so yeah, this vidcast is dedicated to answering any and all questions you guys have about illustration as an art and as a career choice. As a professional illustrator, I get a lot of questions from aspiring illustrators and other professional illustrators about what I do. And because illustration is kind of a wild west as a career, it's not always totally clear as to how to go and make it as an illustrator. So most of us get by with help from other illustrators uh, who are generous and share their experience with us. So I'm happy to share what I know uh, with you guys and all you guys have to do is ask questions and I will put it in my list of questions. I have kind of a spreadsheet and then I try to go through them. Sometimes I do a few questions per episode and other times I'll just spend one episode doing one question. So yeah, if you like this video, please be sure to hit the like button and if you like the channel, if you subscribe to it, you'll be the first to know when an episode drops. So, okay, let's do this. So, news. I have been doing the 100 Day Project, as you guys know, and I just want to keep sharing my thoughts about how it's progressing for me, just as sort of a, a vlog kind of thing. So, I started thinking, yeah, I'm going to just do this simple thing based on noses, and then I kind of got overwhelmed. I thought it would be, it would be really quick, just do like five minutes or less per post, and it ended up being more like a half hour. And I was like, this is just too much. And so I had other concerns about it as well. And I talk about that in uh, a few episodes ago, I talked about it. And I, I decided, okay, yeah, I definitely need some limits to the 100 day project that make it easy for me to do it really quickly and without getting anxious about the quality or about how it's received. So what I did is I just said it'd be one color it would be done with one pen, it would take me one minute and I'd get one chance to do it. I wouldn't do any rehearsals. And so that was great. I started just really focusing in on doing these really quick sketches based on noses, trying to have fun with it. But I kept hitting a wall, just kind of like not going anywhere with it, not really feeling like it was that interesting to me or other people. Um, nonetheless, I'm, I'm still doing it just because it's a 100-day project, and I said I'd do it, and so I'm trying to just stick to it no matter how bored with it I am, I guess, or um, or how bored I feel like other people might be with it. And so the, the one thing that kind of helps this is that I, I stopped posting it on my main Instagram account, and I just have this fledgling account that I put it on. I made a separate account for it, and... And so that's just helped me just put whatever, and I don't really care if, if, I, if I'm not happy with the quality of it, I just put it on anyway. And then at the end of it all, if I'm not happy with any of it, I can just remove the account from public view. And anyway, so I, I've kind of, it's kind of dropped off in precedence for me. I don't really do it actually every day. I might do it once every few days and do a whole bunch and then post in bulk. And that's kind of where I'm at right now with that. So super, super not inspiring, but just real. You know, this is this is sometimes you start a project and you're like, okay, I thought this would be more, but it's not. And I don't have to live up to anyone's expectation. And and I think that's freeing, at least. Uh, at least I don't feel like I have to make it this amazing thing. I do question whether it's a waste of time. I'm not going to put put my heart into it, but I I justify doing it anyway 
by knowing it's not it's not really about how much effort I put into it. This is not a project about doing my best. This is a project about saying I'll do something and sticking to it even if it's hard. And so it's also a project or an experiment in just doing something, just showing up, you know, and Stephen Pressfield talks a lot about that in his book, The War of Art. And I highly recommend that book to anyone who gets creative block or feels intimidated by the blank page or feels burnt out and needs, needs some kind of encouragement to, to keep going. And so that's what the 100 Day Project is turning into right now. We're kind of in the messy middle where it's, um, you know, we're in, into the 30 something of day right now. So it kind of, you know, the novelty of the project's worn off. And here I am just doing it, slogging through. And who knows what might happen? You know, there is always that possibility that I'll get excited about it. So that's what it is. The 100 Day Project for me is just sticking to it. And that's, that's it. So I have really exciting news about um, an upcoming episode that has yet to be recorded, but I have my first chat session with a fellow illustrator booked. And we're going to be talking over Skype, and I'm going to be recording the video call and then sharing it as an episode. And I'm going to drop that episode in early summer. And... I'm super excited. I hope to do more and more of these chats with friends in the industry, which is one of the reasons I want to call this vidcast Making Friends, because um, not only are we all kind of friends in this community of illustration, but I also want to talk to my friends in the, illustra il my friends in the illustration community, uh, my peers who, who I admire and look up to and whose brains I want to pick. So, Obviously, the format of this um, this vidcast is that you guys pick my brain, and it's kind of cool that I like the idea that I can pick my fellow illustrators' brains as well, and I think that can be a really exciting way of delivering content to you guys. So I'm really excited about this, and I will, of course, give you guys more details as this story unfolds. So more in news. So we're building up to ICON in Toronto. I think there might be nine weeks left until ICON. Sorry, did I say ICON in Toronto? I mean ICON in Detroit. So the, in, at the beginning of July, there's ICON, which is an illustration conference. And it's a super exciting mass gathering of all the illustrators you love and know. And of course, there's new illustrators and aspiring illustrators and then seasoned illustrators and we're all kind of under the same roof for a few days and it's an amazing time so I'm really looking forward to that I'm doing a workshop um, at the at the conference based on my inky map Skillshare class so I'm really excited about that unfortunately the the workshop has been sold out but uh, I am looking forward to meeting any of you who signed up and and doing that in person so I'm going to icon in Detroit and then since I'm in that part of the world, I'm going to head north to my old hometown of Toronto. And my family and I are going to be staying there for a couple weeks. And I'm just really excited to spend time in, in, in the city, my old city. I love Toronto. It's such a vibrant, creative city. And I'm going to be connecting with family and some old friends and, and hopefully meeting up with some new creative friends there too and just really for me the trip is about aside from being a family and and having a, a summer vacation kind of thing with my kids there I'm really excited about just reinvigorating my creative life I was quite burned out I have been quite burned out since the fall um, it could have just been the winter with the rain and uh, you know it's gray and drab and everything so that's that's not great for creativity but the idea of going to Toronto for me it was about getting somewhere else seeing another place and meeting up with fellow illustrators or creatives to find that spark again and one of the big things that I, I want to do with my family is do more traveling while working kind of doing more working vacations. So whether that's going to 
Italy or France or maybe somewhere in Asia. We want to travel more as a family, but we're also kind of homebodies. We're also very like, we find it very hard just to even get away from our house. So we thought, what if we just did this two weeks vacation in Toronto and just see how that goes. Toronto's easy for us because we both used to live there and we know we know our way around. We have lots of family and friends who can support us. And so it's not at all scary to imagine being there with our kids and even, even play with the idea of me doing some work while I'm there um, remotely. So that's the point of this trip. It's kind of like a little incubator for future travel plans that we hope we can do. And so that's that's exciting. I'm, that's what we're going to be doing for uh, a chunk of July. And so basically I'm, I'm away from the studio until August. So a lot of things working up to the end of June. I'm trying really hard to balance taking on work that I know I can do, but not letting any of those deadlines get too close to the end of June, lest it be crazy and stressful. So I have been getting a lot of requests for work, but I have been also turning down many of them because I, I just don't want to put myself in a position where I'm freaking out at the end of June and I don't want that freak out to cascade down to the client, of course. So yeah, I guess the one more point in news is, uh, as you can see, I'm in a different space than I have been for most of the other episodes leading up to this. And this is my new studio. So behind me are my family's washer and dryer. But what's behind the camera here is my, this is my workspace. So my I have a built-in desk now. I have uh, shelves with stuff and supplies on it. And um, you can see my light table and easel right here. So I'm, I'm quite settled in now and I'm really loving it. So for the last few years, I've been pretty adamant about not working from home and having my own space away from home and keeping work and home separate. But something changed in the last year where I was just like, it's, it's time for me to take work home. I, um, there's many, many reasons, but one of the big things for me is being around the house more, being around while my children are still young. I have a four-year-old and a six-year-old and just giving them more access to me and my studio when I'm able. So there's a lot of times during the day when I'm stumped or stuck. And I, when I was at my other studio, which was kind of isolated and on a farm and far from anything, I just kind of have to walk around or, or just stay in my studio. And, and sometimes I just needed to get out and it was hard to do that. So now I can just step out of the door and jump on the trampoline with the kids or do some gardening or something, something where I'm kind of a getting out of my work head for a bit. And I think that's going to be really good. And this week, just working here, I've been very happy. And it's felt like a game changer. It's the right time in my life to do this. And so I'm very thankful for this um, amazing opportunity to work from home and to be closer to my family, more accessible to them. So that's that. We'll see how it goes. And I'll keep you updated on that. So those are my news points. Now I'm going to share some thoughts. So this week, I've been thinking about how when a client tells you to just do your thing, they trust you, uh, meaning they don't, they don't really know what they want. So they're like, just, just do your thing. You know, whatever you do, we'll like. That is a huge red flag. And so recently I took on a project, a pro bono project, uh, doing an illustration for uh, let's just call it a creative organization and rarely I rarely take on pro bono work for anyone for any reason but I saw some overlap in what they were asking me to do in a, and another project that I was planning on doing anyway so I felt like it was an opportunity to kind of motivate me to do the project I had to do anyway and it, and I just said, I will do this on the condition that you let me use this image for this other reason and that I own the copyright and and they were like, yeah, totally. But this client also asked, they just basically said, we want you to make this thing, 
we love what you do, just do, do what you do. And when clients tell me that, to me, they're either being lazy or they're just too busy to think it through, to think through um, what they actually want and write it down and communicate it to me. And if your client's not going to be specific, you need to be for them. Otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of time making stuff, guessing what they want, and then giving it to them. And they're going to see the work. Once a client sees something that you make, suddenly they're going to have an opinion. And that whole do what you do, we love everything you do, we totally trust you, that just evaporates very fast. So my, my case in point here is I know better than that and going into this project uh, what I did was I started defining the project on my own terms as best as I could just basically saying okay this is how I think this will go I'm gonna write this Word doc or this Google document and just share it with you guys and then when I shared it with them suddenly they had opinions and they were pushing back on things and saying oh okay well you said this but we should probably do that so I'm not at all bothered by that. In fact, this is exactly what I want. I want the client to be specific and tell me what they want because I need to respond to their need. That's what being an illustrator is about. It's about responding to a client's need. It's not just about your own whimsy. And so, lo and behold, they see something, then they see something that, that being this Word document where I've described what I'm going to do and now they have opinions about it and so I would encourage you guys whenever a client just tells you to do what they do realize that they're either being lazy or they're too busy to write the specification themselves and you have to do that specification you need to ask them the questions how big is this illustration what are the dimensions what are you going to use it for what kind of content or message should this image yeah what kind of message should this illustration convey what is the tone what kind of colors do you want how busy or minimal do you want it maybe this maybe it's uh, an illustration for a magazine and it needs to be three by four aspect ratio these are all very specific things that the client may not realize they know but if you say how big do you want it to be? what are the dimensions do you want it to have a background or do you want to be just like a clear background? All these kinds of questions that you could possibly ask, ask if the client hasn't told you. And you'll save yourself a lot of time and you'll also make it easier to do your job because the more constraints you give yourself as an illustrator, the more freedom you have to think about the idea and how to solve the problem. The more defined the problem is, the more successful the solution will be. So. If someone asks you to just do your thing, your thing at first is asking them as many questions as possible to make sure you understand what they want and they understand what you can do. So on to the question of the week. Um, I'm going to just answer one question today and I'm excited to answer this because this is going to be a little bit different format. Um, I'm going to just talk about the question here and then we're going to jump to, to um, screen capture view, you're going to see my screen and I'm going to walk you through some of my uh, sketches. So the question is, could you please share your rough sketches, either just random ones or ones that led to finished projects? And this question comes from Avatar Gill. So thank you Avatar for your question. And I've been holding on to this question for a long time because I had to sort of think about how I'm going to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, switch views here. You're going to be looking at my screen. I'm going to open up Adobe Bridge and I'm going to poke around some of my sketches and I'll show you what a project looks like when I start the sketches, how those sketches finally become finished art. Before I do go into the actual sketches, so I want to talk a little bit about what sketches are. So sketches are basically really rough, usually black and white, drawn by pencil, approximations of the illustration 
you're planning. So it's kind of like a blueprint or a wireframe. And sketches can be really rough and loose, or they can be kind of tight and quite um, well-defined. And in either case, the most important thing about a sketch is to show the concept. What is the thought or the message of the illustration? And, and then almost as important is how will that look? Where, what is the content? And where will that content be placed? So we're talking about concept, content, and composition. That's what a sketch is about. A sketch is content, or a sketch is concept because it's about the big idea, and then it's about content, what things will be in that image to communicate that idea, and composition, how will those things be laid out in the image? And I think that some people, depending on, on your illustration style and your own preferences, some people will do like a really, really rough illustration, kind of like that. Everybody knows about the, the idea of a napkin sketch. You just draw a simple thing on a napkin, and then that becomes like this big final thing later on. And probably most illustrations that at least start as a doodle. But what do you show the client? Do you show the client something really loose or do you show the client something kind of more tight and buttoned down? And personally, I used to show the client something kind of loose and, and rough. And then I would just say, you know, we have to see how this plays out in the final art. And at that time, my style was much more improvisational. And I was also less experienced, so I, I had less of a visual of how I would actually execute an idea. And that worked well for me then because I didn't want to spend a lot of time worrying about how an illustration would um, end up being executed, especially since like I, I just had no way of knowing until I started doing it, right? And, and I, I don't like the idea of illustrating before a, a sketch is approved. But as I've become more experienced as an illustrator, as I've become more acquainted with my own style and it's become more consistent, I have more of a vision of how my final art will look. And I can, I, I now try to bring my sketches to the point where they're as close as possible to the final illustration without being, you know, without getting too much into color and texture and, and all that. And the reason I do this is <clears throat> previously when I would do my rough sketch, to be honest, I didn't know, even if it was a great idea, I didn't know how it would turn out as a final illustration, whether it would look as good as the idea was in concept. So I like to now prove my sketch or my concept I want to prove to myself that it's going to actually make a good composition, a good image, by being more well-defined at that sketch stage. And, and so that works well also because the client can see very clearly what the final illustration is going to look like, and they can sign off on it. And, and, and you can almost work out a lot of the stylistic, or you can almost work out a lot of the the matters of content and composition in the sketch stage before getting all, spending all the time kind of creating that, all that finished artwork in, in Photoshop or Illustrator or on a canvas, uh, depending on how you illustrate. And I like that. And, and I, I rarely have tons of changes after I've, I've created the finished artwork. And so this, the idea of doing a tight illustration has been working out for me. And I think again the, the biggest thing for me is just like I I'll do tons of I will do tons of sketches for myself just to see what's working and then the ones that I feel are the best they work best as concept and as a composition I I whittle it down to my favorite one two or three and those are what I show the client and and um, then I can they they choose one of those either with some change requests or they just approve it. And that's our contract moving forward. And if they ask for any changes that are so different from that sketch after I've created the final art, 
then then I have I am entitled to either say, well, no, this these changes that you're asking are not in the sketch that you approved. So if we go back to that stage, we're going to have to look at some additional fees. Like I'm I'm in a, I'm entitled to say that if a client approves on a sketch that's pretty well defined. And so I like that certainty. And all this is is not to say that I'm just, you know, creating a coloring page and I'm coloring in as final art. There's lots of discovery between the sketch and the final art. Uh, there has to be. If there's no if there's no value add between the sketch and the final art, then I feel like um, there's something disappointing about that. I feel like a sketch really needs to be well defined, but it's your style and your technique and stuff that really adds that life and magic to the artwork. And and for me, that's been my goal. That's been the, like the best practice for me is to have a a well-defined sketch that gets even better once you add color and texture and and there's more life in the final art than there was in the sketch. I actually talk a lot about the the idea of, of capturing the life that you have in a sketch because sometimes we do a sketch and it's spontaneous and we really like something on that and when we try and turn it into final art um, it it gets something is lost and it doesn't look right and we lost that initial energy we had in the sketch. I talked about that in a previous episode and I will link that in the show notes. So how about now that we we know what sketches are, how about we go into looking at some of my own sketches and you guys can see how that process goes for me. So here I'm at my website here and I'm just going to pick a project that I think will be good to show the sketches. So let's do this one. This is a pretty big project I recently did for a condo development. And these are just the images that I created for them. And they've used these in like their brochures and, and on huge murals in their presentation center. So they're all little like these here are all little vignettes about the neighborhood or the part of town that this condo development is in. So this is South Vancouver. You know, they want to talk about the green space. They want to talk about how there's daycare nearby and there's a liquor store on premises. And th they wanted me to show a little bit about the, the entrance and that there's this kind of what they call a porte cochere, which is, you know, basically a more of a grand entrance. And the site of this condo development was, or is, on where there was this classic historic motel called the Blue Boy. And it was kind of a, a, like a mid-century modern motel created by this well-known architect. And in its heyday, it was, it was quite a destination. But over the years, you know, over the 70s, 80s, and 90s, it started kind of becoming more and more seedy until it became a, like a kind of seedier motels. And, it, you know, there was like bed bugs and, and it was not the, it, 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 it had been a long time since its glory days. So they wanted to celebrate the, the site's past and that's that's the idea with this illustration to showing the original motel or hotel and you know showing other history about the area how there you know there's, there's one of Vancouver's oldest buildings still standing there in uh, South Vancouver and just showing some of the recreation and scenes and then they have this here what they call a hero image here this is the the illustration of what the new development would look like uh, kind of rendered in my illustration style so they have like a large glass tower and they have rooftop gardens and and there's transit and all that kind of thing and then of course there's the map of the neighborhood with all the different featured icons so 
what I'll show you is some of the sketches for these illustrations and just to see how they start and how they get to where they, they've ended up. So the brief for this project was to create, I can't remember, it might have been 10 of these vignettes, these spot illustrations here, plus a hero image, which is this one. This one was made to be a bit bigger, plus a map. And so it was quite well defined what they wanted me to do. They wanted one to be about transportation. And you can see that I sketched this digitally. Um, I started using, around when I did this project, I, I had just got my Apple Pencil and an iPad Pro, and I started sketching using Astropad and experimenting a little bit in Procreate. And so these were made in Astropad using Photoshop. So here I am working out for the transportation illustration, how I would show that idea. So one was a front view of the bus. And you can see I kind of have sort of layers here. Sometimes I'll do a sketch and I'll sketch over it just to um, refine, or build on what I sketched. I often sketch very rough and loose and then I sketch over it and over it and over it until it becomes more and more refined. This looks a lot closer to what I ended up doing. If you look back to the original or the final art here, this image is fairly close to what I ended up doing. And I'm playing around here with just different backgrounds. And that's one of the opportunities or advantages of illustrating digital or one of the advantages of sketching digitally is that you can play around with different options a little more easily and quickly. This looks like what I ended up with. So you can see that I, I went for a few iterations before I ended up on something that I was happy with. And this is what I showed the client and they were happy with it. And these are just some other iterations. So here's the one I showed the client, and then here is the sketch after the client asked for some changes. So in this case, the client asked simply for more definition in the building in the background, because that tower in the background is actually a previous project that the developer uh, had made. So that was important to them. So I just was able to make that quick modification in the sketch. Okay, so here's an illustration about the green space. So I'm working out, I know that I need to show the building, the, the condo in the background, and show in the foreground the idea of these picnickers enjoying the green space. And, you know, sometimes my sketches look really weird. <laughs> I think the faces on these people just didn't look right. So I went to this, and this actually looks much more like what I ended up with, if you look here. Um, so you can see between the sketch and the final, there's quite a lot of continuity. And really it's just how I bring in textures and colors and refinements. That's where the surprise and that extra bonus magic happens. This one was about daycare. And you can see all the ideas in the sketch are intact in the final illustration. I just kind of refine things a little bit more and work, work the actual specifics out to a more ref refined degree. This was another option I gave them where it was more the mother walking away rather than to, away from, rather than to the daycare center. And just different options. And this is a case where looking at my my iteration numbers, I have sketch 1, 1A, 1B, 1C, 1E. Um, I think I think my first sketch 
was the one that came closest to what I used. And that's actually very common that the very first sketch I do is the one I end up going with. And the others are more just like working out whether the first illustration or the first sketch was um, hitting all the right notes. And quite often it, it has. I work out a lot of the, I try and just work out the images succinctly as possible without it being like a final illustration, but it's also pretty close to what I end up doing in the final. Here, here we have what I sketched, you know, uh, a lovely lady on her bicycle with baguette and wine and flowers in her basket and a fella walking into the wine store and in their final feedback they wanted me to add you know make the sign more specific to the actual liquor store that will be there and and um, yeah just made some refinements and you can see some of those changes there no surprises with this sketch the sketch looks a lot like what I ended up doing for the final art and in the final art I'm working out you know how does that sign look when I actually illustrate it how can I make it look interesting what about those textures the pattern of the mosaic tile on the facade of the building what do the stones look like how is the this one of the things they wanted me to render in this was or one of the things they wanted me to feature in this illustration was this big mosaic of the Blue Boy um, painting by Gaines, is it Gainsborough? The artist Gainsborough. So, you know, I, I spent some time making sure that came through here and that was really fun. And yeah, for this, it was kind of an interesting mix of my really stylized abstracted kind of illustration style and then having something a little bit more realistic and literal embedded in in in, in this reference to the Gainsborough mosaic so that was that's I like doing that kind of thing and this was another view that I gave them as an option so here's an example of something I tried to which was a lot more complex they wanted me to show sort of this bridge in its, you know, this bridge in the schoolhouse, which are historic things that don't exist anymore in that part of town. So I had to kind of use my imagination about what they looked like and how would they be featured. And we ended up with something a lot more simple with one thing being kind of called out in the foreground, that being the schoolhouse and then the bridge and the idea of the rest of the city kind of relegated to the background supporting the foreground elements and here's the sketch that that ended up being based on this was another concept oh no this is a concept for the next one which was um, ended up being this idea so they wanted me to show South Vancouver but also show the mountains which are way in the north part of the city and then um, City Hall, which is also in more than north part of the city. And, and so I had to sort of take some kind of a montage approach showing different parts of, let's see if I can find, I seem to have lost that sketch, but it was something like this and it ended up being a lot more simplified. And so how do you show all these things that you can't actually see in the same glance? Well, you just kind of fudge it and make a montage. And that's what I ended up doing for this one. So for the hero illustration, which was meant to be, this was the most challenging because I'm actually depicting a building that hasn't been built yet. And the only thing I have to go by are renderings from the architect and and so in this case, I actually opted to take the architectural drawings, kind of like the blueprint drawings, and I basically traced over them as much as I could without it being too um, obvious that I traced them. And then I really relied on my, my style using textures and colors to make sure it was a very original piece. 
you can see like here's the architectural blueprint kind of CAD drawing of the building and then I just looked at this I'm like ah there's too many balconies and, and lines and stuff like how is this going to look in my own more simplified abstracted style and after a lot of playing around I just thought the best thing to do is is to sort of use use the actual CAD drawing as a as the like basically trace it but then use some artistic liberties to make it look more stylized and that's what I did and of course drawing it like this gives the client a sense of like okay it's going to look like the building because this is going to be the one the client's the most picky about of course they would be and then it was just about what details do I add that add a bit of fantasy and whimsy to it and this ended up Let's see, I think this ended up being what I showed, and this ended up being what I created for them. And you can see, even though I traced the CAD drawing, I used my creativity, hopefully, to um, create a very unique image that was quite set apart and way more interesting than just a plain CAD drawing. Here's a sketch for the map. Um, and sketching for a map illustration is a lot more involved than sketching for a single image. And that's because a map is basically a base map plus a whole bunch of individual images as icons. And if you want to see how I do that, I literally show how to do that step by step in my Inky Maps class on Skillshare. And I also show how I how I sketch for more simpler illustrations in my Inky Illustrations class. So if you guys check those out, um, you'll see a little bit more like of a live me actually creating the sketches and you'll see how those kind of build out. And I think you'll find the, the how I sketch for maps particularly useful uh, just based on how, how I decide what to illustrate for each icon and then how I add that into an overall sketch of the total map. Whew, okay, so those are some sketches for one project. I wanted to share that particular project because there were a lot of images in that set and each image actually had a lot going in it, going on in it. So there was a lot of background to a lot of those illustrations. So I think it was a nice example of a very full illustration project and what sketches for such a large scale project look like. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and if you have any questions that came out of watching me show that because I'm sure I'm just showing it kind of breezing through, I'm sure that I'm forgetting or omitting things that you might have questions about. So just let me know whether anything piqued your curiosity there. Um, you know, some people might wonder if I'm, if I always illustrate just digitally and what my tools that I use for that, I can answer quickly that um, I used to be a very staunch paper and pencil only sketcher, but since getting used to my Apple pencil and my iPad Pro, I almost sketch exclusively digitally now. And it's been a game changer. There's way less paper waste. I would sometimes go through 30 sheets of paper for sketches or more, and then I'd have to scan each one in. And so just being able to, to draw directly into the iPad has been a huge game changer. And I use Pro Procreate mostly for my sketches now. So I, at the time that I did the sketches that I showed you in my examples here, I was using Astropad sketching in Photoshop, but I find the pencil tool in Procreate to be more responsive and natural feeling than any pencil that I could use in Photoshop. And I like how I can, you know, Procreate's not perfect. And I kind of wish that there was a, an app that was specifically for sketching and it was just basically like a pure pencil on a sketch pad 
kind of app and Apple Notes in iOS used to be perfect for that. But when iOS 11 came out, they kind of ruined it and made it more less natural. You used to be able to draw stuff and, and kind of erase what you drew on the spot. And it was like you could naturally re, um, kind of remove the pencil from the page in the way that an eraser would in real life. But now they have this thing where like you draw a line and then other lines or whatever, when you erase it, it erases that whole object. So it's, it's kind of like treating each new thing that you put down with your pencil as a layer. And I find that very unnatural and distracting. So I've stopped using Apple iOS notes and I just use Procreate for most of my sketches. So I love answering your questions. You can ask those questions in the comments here and that's the best way to get me. And you can also find me at tomfroze.com, on Instagram at Mr. Tom Froze, on Twitter at Tom Froze, and I will leave all my links of how to find me down below. So thanks guys for watching and listening, whatever it is you do. Again, if you like this video, please hit that like button and be, be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers by the end of 2018. It's my modest little goal just to see like if I can get to a thousand people watching and listening to these videos, it makes me know that I'm creating content that you guys are being helped from and, and that is meaningful to you. And that's why else do this. I'm not doing this to listen to my own voice. So let me know you are liking this by subscribing to my channel please and thank you all right guys my name is tom froze and it's been good chatting i'll see you guys next week keep making great illustrations and keep asking great questions i'll see you next week